people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that uh, you guys are getting your week off to a great start. Um, the wife and I took some time down to spend with the kids on their spring break. Uh, so I've been kind of out of pocket. Uh, but a lot of stuff has transpired. So I'm going to try to touch on a number of different issues over the course of this week. So you'll probably see me a little bit more than usual which is in the plans anyway there's a lot that I need to get out to you guys uh, in the way of empowerment personally and as a collective so look forward to that um, I want to talk to you today about something that popped off I kind of address this person uh, not from a not so much of a personal perspective but from a practice perspective uh, maybe a year or two ago I uh, can't remember exactly when but it was some time ago it wasn't any time recently uh, but Derrick Jackson a person who has built quite the following uh, between YouTube and Instagram I'm not sure how uh, well he's doing on Facebook but I know that he has a, uh, at least a million followers on uh, Instagram and he has over 500,000 on YouTube uh, and so he has definitely influenced a lot of people. Uh, my uh, issue with Derek uh, when I addressed him was uh, how I felt he was in a certain way pandering to uh, certain issues that black women are struggling with. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the failure of black men. Um, and sim the simple gist of what I shared in that video, and it's still um, it's still on this channel so on well, it's on the YouTube channel you're probably gonna see this video in more than one place so if you're on YouTube it's on the channel if you're not on YouTube go to the YouTube my YouTube channel the black voice and you will be able to search for it and find it but my gist was sim simply it wasn't a personal attack uh, it was saying hey look instead of telling black women what they shouldn't accept from black men what they shouldn't uh, do what you know what they need to do how they need to do it don't accept this don't do this you need to do this if you treat a black woman the way she's supposed to be treated if you empower a black woman to truly understand who she is you won't tell her what what she has to do or what she shouldn't accept the very knowledge of her worth will dictate what she will tolerate from anyone and that was the gist of what I had to say. I, I work hard to empower people. I don't do a whole lot of telling them what they should do. I don't judge them when they come to me and they tell me their life story or where they're at or what they're going through. I don't judge them and say, you shouldn't be taking that. Why are you putting up? No, my job is to reconnect them with their true identity, to, revo to, to revolutionize their personal identity their self-concept self-image and so that's what I got at the situation about it wasn't an all out of salt my whole thing is I don't want anybody to fail I, I want everyone to be successful especially my people but at the same time we can't build our success on the suffering and the struggles of others without providing them a relief you know if someone's suffering and you have the answer you can make a living off of it that's a, that's solving a problem but you can't pander to an issue without providing a real solution uh not pan not not uh projected panaceas that don't actually work uh not very anecdotal observations that under the surface don't deal with the true source and so forth so that was where I was on it and I didn't go back to it I didn't deal with it uh, I don't have and I've listened to a lot of his stuff because some of his stuff makes sense uh, and that and I, and I said this some time ago what makes him dangerous is a lot of the stuff he makes sense and what, uh, a lot of stuff he says is true but it's out of context or it's misapplied but because it's true or more importantly because it sounds good to the soul 
uh, it can be very dangerous. It makes it a very dangerous thing because it'll sound good to you. It'll feel good. It, it, it caters to what people want to hear, not, say, not, not necessarily what they need to hear, and it's dangerous. But anyway, all that to say, um, over the last week or so, I don't know when. Uh, again, I'm not the trend person. Um, and the only reason I bring things that are part of trending, uh, number one is, again, this isn't a gossip channel. Uh, so we're not going to be talking details of his um, infidelity. And it took me a while to totally verify that this wasn't just somebody taking shots and to ensure that it is what it says it is. But again, if it's not a teaching moment, it won't find its way on here. Just to sit up and talk about what happened to somebody, how they screwed up, how happy you are. Number one, I'm not happy he failed for a number of different reasons. He's a black man, although I feel like, you know, out of line, he's a black man. But more importantly, because of what it means to those of us who actually use platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, to deliver a message, to deliver concepts, to deliver uh, principles and practices that can help people change their lives. And sometimes we're associated with words like life coach, relationship counselor, therapist, um, and then someone who comes along who is also associated with the industry uh, does something like that. It gives the industry a black eye. Um, someone came on and said that black men shouldn't be putting him on blast right now because uh, he makes all black men look bad. And I disagree with that. I think because he has made himself such a representation of what a black man should be uh, by the image that he's presented, I think it's important for black men to call him on it. Not kick him while he's down, but make him accountable. Uh, and so my thing that I'm going to do today is not focus on, you know, those who haven't heard, uh, I believe her name is Tasha Kay, and I'm going to get to that in a minute too. Her name is Tasha K. Uh, obviously has had an issue with Derek for a while. And she has let it be known and she's been waiting uh, for the hammer to drop. And the last thing that you can do as an individual who is building your brand and trying to do something in the world is give those people who are wishing for your demise the ammunition they need to take you down. Um, more importantly, you cannot, in this world, uh, understanding the universal laws uh, that are in place, one being the law of reciprocity, what you put out comes back. Think that you can literally chastise black men for behavior. Talk to black women about what a real black man is. Give, um, you know, all this advice on what should happen in a marriage. And then this be going on behind the scenes and then expect it not to blow up uh, again. Tasha. Uh, I guess it's Tasha K or whatever. And from what I understand, she has a pretty hefty following on social media as well. And that's the thing that probably got me more than anything, more than all of the stuff and people losing their mind about what Derek did. Uh, unfortunately, Derek did something that far too many uh, men and women do. But let's just talk about black men for a minute. Uh, Derek did something that far too many men do, and that is to spurn the covenant of marriage. And that's something that I'm going to be talking about later today on a live stream, is the importance of understanding marriage beyond the romantic notion of what it is, beyond the honeymoon phase how important relationships are uh, you know there are a lot of people that have come to me and gave me kudos and pats on the back and acknowledged me I've had women a couple of my clients as a matter of fact uh, one admitted to me at our last session last week that the reason she came to me to work with me as a life coach was because of what she perceived in the way that I carried myself and how I handled myself with my wife and my family. And while that was definitely um, encouraging um, 
and it, you know, and I, 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 I consider it an honor to be uh, considered at that at, at that level. Uh, but the person I want to want to feel that way about me is my wife. Uh, and I think she does and beyond. Uh, but let me explain something to you. I've never presented myself as being perfect. What I will tell you is I never cheat on my wife. I will never put my hands on my wife. I don't raise my voice to my wife. I don't verbally abuse my wife. I don't attack my wife. I don't talk about all the things she does wrong or all the things she does wrong. I think she does wrong. My, my, my day is spent encouraging my wife. My day is spent letting her know I believe in her. My day is spent showing her that all the things she went through before I came along, she doesn't have to worry about that anymore. And I'm not perfect in the, my attempt to do this. Uh, and I never pretended to. What I can tell you is you won't read about me cheating on my wife. Uh, but and you won't read about me abusing or beating on my wife. You won't read, read about me being out somewhere and misspeaking to my wife. Um, and so those are things that I can speak on consistently, and I do, uh, because I'm living it. I'm living it with a passion. I'm living it with a yearning. I wake up every day wanting to be better than I was the day before as a husband, as a father, as a businessman. I want to be better. So in essence, that's the thing that happens when you sit up and you let things fall. This thing is really bothering me not because he cheated in the sense but because he built this wall and platform of perfection that so many bought into and we can say all we want to but i'm looking at the followers they bought into it he found a niche just like steve harvey he found a niche and he he, he anchored himself in it and he monetized it and my thing is if you're delivering something of intrinsic value you're delivering something that people get in exchange for giving you their time from buying your merchandise from buying your books and all of that if you're giving value equal value or greater value i was always taught by my grandfather leave people with more than you take away so if you're charging them a certain amount leave them with more value than what you're charging them for they can never complain about being had taken or conned you know and so that is always my goal to sit up and say okay if this is what i'm charging this is what i'm giving you and yeah some of my uh some of my courses uh working with me is not cheap but i guarantee i've got clients that i've had for a couple of years longer that have read up why because i deliver and that's all that i asked of derek in the beginning make sure what you're doing is not just sounding good and, and, and fluffing someone's head up without really truly dealing with the core issues that would allow them to accept some of the things that you're telling them not to accept. See, for someone to accept it, that means there's something internally that they need to deal with. There's some healing that needs to take place. There's some reevaluation that needs to play. There's some core issues that you may not even be qualified to help them deal with. Let's let's be realistic about this. There are some things that they need to go deep and deal with. If they're doing all if they're allowing all this stuff to happen in their lives, it's because they think it's okay. Because the moment you decide something's not okay, you stop it. When you know your value, you make sure people treat you to the level of your value. It is it's just natural. But anyway, what I found that bothered me more, back to what I, my original point, you know how I, I get, uh, back to my original point, and that is in researching all of this to make sure before I get on here and talk about this man at all at any way that what I'm addressing actually happened. So I, I did some research, and the first thing I found out is we have, one of the reasons why we have such a problem. I look at the stuff that's on Derek's channel, all these followers you know literally making major loop uh, I look at Tasha K's channel and I look at it was another young black woman who's on there and, and, and all of these people have these massive followers and the whole time Ta Tasha K is on there she's talk, she's you know thank you for the donations thank you. so people are literally uh, on her super chat giving and, 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 and I'm saying how hard it is for us to have programs like Black Man Lee, Restoring Ghettos, Forgotten Daughters, and so many more that I've designed solely through the Odyssey Project and my research department, research and development department. How many I've designed and how little support we get. 
we're talking, we made this an official organization 16 years ago. We, I think last year sometime, finally hit the $10,000 donation mark. And think about the work that we do. Think about the research. Think about the what it takes for me to write the books that you guys see. And think about all the programs. What do you think it took for me to gain the understanding about uh, rites of passage, racial socialization, epigenetics, all of that stuff that literally I lecture on now um, internationally? What do you think it takes? Who do you think financed that? I did. No, I don't get grants. I don't get any of that. And I look up and I see stuff like this and I see we're going in and we, I mean, just, you know, chat. I mean, the super chat just fired up and it's behind sensationalized, hyped up gossip and stuff like that. And I'm looking, I said, this is our problem. And it's not just with her. This is what I see, period. People who are really putting down good solid information either has a very large non-black following or they are having a rough time when you center on black collective as an audience if you don't entertain them you can't hold their attention um, before we lost the last channel which was on its way to 20,000 followers uh, subscribers and it was growing pretty fast um, it took me, it's, it hit its stride around, I guess, 2016, 2017. I started it in 2010. And it was really uh, a, one of my comrades in arms in, on, on this battlefield of truth, uh, Neyota Yora, who put me, uh, put me on by syndicating me. And I didn't even know it. Someone else told me, man, you know, she really feels what you're doing. She's syndicating you. You're, you're on all her stuff. And that would, people start contacting me for interviews and saying, yeah, man, more, you, more people know about you than you think, Doc. And I started to realize it. But my thing is when I see that much energy going towards that, to each his own, do your thing, man. People like to be entertained. Uh, I like to be entertained. You know, but entertainment has a place. And when it comes to me, what I focus on and what I do, I take seriously. I'm not trying to get up here and make people laugh. I might say something funny. And uh, my wife was talking about this uh, last week. If they really knew you, they would probably freak out because I'm not the serious dude all the time. I have everybody cracking up. Uh, we had a ball this past weekend. Um, and you know i and you know we keep each other laughing she and i but she you know the whole thing one of my things has always been she spent so much of her time going through so much if you haven't read her book ghetto's forgotten daughters you need to check that out uh link is always in the description box on youtube but uh in it she tells you in, in i mean so transparently what she went through his life from being molested at five on up to being raped twice in her teens to having an abusive alcoholic father and so much more that she had to survive come out of to become the woman that she is that I love that I cover that I protect and you know but 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 one of the things that I've always just wanted to do is make her smile make her laugh to see that because I know what the pain looks like behind I see her have those glimpses back into the past and so that's the thing so I'm not this person that sits around all the time just, you know, straight faced and, you know, I'm actually kind of throw it off, uh, you know, but when it's time to make things happen and do my job, I'm one of the best at it. And so I, I do what I do. But my thing is, when I looked at that, that's the first I'm like, this is what everybody's so fired up about. But anyway, she goes at it. And the thing is, there are receipts. And it it's not a good look and again i tell you i'm not here to talk about the details you want the details and all of that you can go over there i'm here to talk about what this means to us as, in the black collective and here's my final analysis we need black men and i've been saying what i'm about to say is something new you know i didn't all of a sudden develop this to go along with the Derrick jackson story this is something i've been saying for years 
we as black men got to get to a point to really truly realize and understand what our role is. We love to claim to be kings. We love to claim to be heads. We want to claim to be leaders. But we don't want to take on the responsibility that's associated with being a leader, with being a king. See, the king, he owns all of the things that are happening in his kingdom. And he works to make sure his kingdom is operating the way he wants them to. It's a reflection of his leadership. And when it's not, he takes ownership in it. He understands that while someone else may be doing something wrong, they're under his leadership. They're under his rule. And he needs to be able to manage that. He needs to be able to make sure the people who need to feel safe feel safe. He needs to make sure the people who need who have jobs to do are doing the jobs they're supposed to be doing. He doesn't get to pass the buck. He doesn't get to point the finger. It's nothing that annoys me more than a black man blaming a black woman for the state of black America and I'm not in any way relieving the black woman of her culpability and saying she doesn't have some responsibility in it but if I'm claiming myself as to be the leader I have to take the first step and what I told people 15 years ago I re-emphasized it eight years ago and I've been saying it consistently ever since is the black man has to love the black woman back to life the black woman has gone through enough. Malcolm told us she's the most unprotected, most disrespected, most hated. And, 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 and yes, the black, man, the black man has the biggest target on his back. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. But the black woman needs to be covered because her power is spiritual. You know, as powerful as her physical womb is, her spiritual womb is that much greater. So we need to be covering her. We need to be carrying ourselves in a way that when a black woman is in a in an environment where she doesn't feel comfortable, if she looks up and sees a black man, she should feel safe. We shouldn't be reading statistics that say that the second leading cause of death for females between the ages of 15 and 44 is intimate partner homicide, with the predominant of uh, those being black men. That shouldn't be what we're looking at. We should be standing up and we should be calling one another out in a respectful but very direct way. And we should be holding one another accountable. Every time I do a video like that, I get cats coming on and commenting about being a simp because we've been trained that anybody that actually cares for a woman puts a woman first is a simp. Anyone that holds their woman in high regard and says they love the woman is a simp. Anyone who refuses to to to, to uh, disrespect that woman is a simp. It's amazing how we apply that term and how we view our women. That that there used to be a code in the hood that women and children were off limits to certain things. Now it's all open. You can treat a woman just like you treat a man. You can hit a woman just like you treat a man. You can disrespect her. I'm looking up and uh, there's a situation here in Houston where a mother who had a friend who died along with her three kids in a car accident left her six-year-old with someone she knew. I don't know if it's a family member or whatever, a, a male, to go to the vigil, the candlelight vigil for the friend. While she was gone, the kid dropped a glass of water. The guy freaked out about the water being dropped and shot the kid multiple times, killed the six-year-old girl for dropping a glass of water. Now, one look at the dude, and I knew right off the bat he had mental issues. The child should have never been left with him in the first place. So we do have to talk about that. We have to say, what were you thinking, Mom? And I actually believe that she needs to be held accountable. She needs to be held accountable for leaving her child with a person that obviously could not uh, be the one. Now, I could have read the story wrong, and it could be some other things. And so I'll, I'll, I'll say that. What am I, but the idea that a black man in any condition of state shot a six-year-old multiple times, we've got problems. we got problems because, number one, black men will not seek help with their mental issues. Seeking any type of support, mental health support, is stigmatized. You're crazy. You're weak. So we don't seek it. We just sit up and we let things build. We don't heal. We just carry our trauma into the next situation and become even more dysfunctional. And I'm going to tell you something. I've said this so many times I can't count. We were designed to work together, black men, black women. We, and, and I've said this before. I've said that we will only get as high 
as our women can spiritually lift us and elevate us. And we will only get as far as our men can physically lead us. And if we don't learn how to merge the feminine energy of our women with the masculine energy of our men to create a synergy that propels us further than we could ever get on our own, we will always be in last place because we are not working and operating in our roles. We spend way too much time blaming each other. Back to the Derek Jackson thing in general because it's not just Derek. I think Derek gets the spotlight because he presented himself a certain way. And I think that should be a lesson to all of us. First of all, you're human. Second of all, make sure you're straight before you start counseling people on what to be because people will hear what you say, but they're gonna observe what you do. And I think that that's the thing that we as men specifically talking to black men now we got to walk the walk it's good to beat your chest i'm not one of those people that talk that humility stuff i think you need to sit up and declare your manhood declare your masculinity declare your greatness declare your purpose declare what you're capable of declare your direction towards excellence declare it beat your chest but be damn sure you're walking when you do it's okay to stumble because none of us are perfect but what you cannot do is be blatantly operating outside of the very parameters that you set you cannot do that you cannot sit up and declare something and put such emphasis on it and then somebody can go back specifically because there's uh some some uh People who are saying, well, when he messed with this person, it, it seems that he may have been separated from his wife. Well, I'm one of those people that say, until you're divorced, you're married. Uh, and I've seen far too many people separate it and get back together. Um, and then if you doing all that extra junk, extra marital, extracurricular bull crap while you're separated and you come back together, now you got extra stuff to try to get over and you've pulled other people into your mess so you need to deal with one relationship get it over with sure it's over with and so even after divorce you need to wait a while because i've seen people get divorced and get remarried again even after the divorce you need to wait a while why because people's lives are involved in what you're doing when you go out and get somebody to you it may be just a piece of ass but to them they're engaged and I think that's what really got him exposed here is he was basically coming at this young girl and I'm calling her girl I'm 54 years old um, he cut you know he's coming at this young lady and from all intensive purpose of the way she's presenting the story and again this is just her side but what she does have is receipts that she was with him and it did happen so it that happened she's got text messages and videos of stuff where a lot of stuff is happening and again i'm not getting into the details of you know the escapades and all that that's not why i'm here but you know so from her uh perspective from what the way she tells the story he's telling her that hey look it's over we're separated you know it's just not going to work um and so she's pulled into it now you've got the wife back and all of a sudden he blocks her and a bunch of other stuff happens and so now she's left out of it. my thing is here's where the problem comes in with that number one is you're married until you're not married not because we're separated not because we had a hard day not because i got pissed off and i went to stay at a hotel overnight none of that you're married until you're married we've got to stop spurning the institution of marriage and thinking that it does not have an impact on the current state of how we're living our lives and how we're faring in this world you can't consistently talk about the de moral decline in our world and then not acknowledge that we've had a consistent decline in the commitment of marriage we have to understand that we can trace the moral decline along with how we have handled and viewed and dealt with our marriages and i'm not just talking in the last 50 years in the u.s i'm talking about over and over again in history nations have crumbled and it has started with a decline why is the why is the marriage so important because the marriage is the foundation for the family 
The marriage is the foundation on which the family is built. You have two people get married. They are normally going to get married because they have like values. They have like views. They're headed in the same direction. They want the same thing out of life. Then what happens? Those values uh, come together. And then you have children. And then what happens with the children? The children are in an environment where those, those values are practiced daily. They are spoken. They are carried out. And it's in repetition. So it is inculcated into the very nature and psyche of the children. And so they take on the value system and they carry it out and then they perpetuate it out and then they have children. And you literally extend your legacy of how you lived your life through your progeny. And ultimately, you create an entire environment of family that thinks like you, that moves like you, that wants the same thing as you, and you guys move forward. The family is disintegrating because the marriages are disintegrating. And so, but here's the thing why I brought that up. A woman came on, uh, Derek talked about a woman that came to him and asked him, you know, say she's been separated from her husband for a while, and should she date? And his answer was no. And he gave the reasons why, some of which I've just shared with you, that he strongly, you know, does not recommend it. And yet that's the very thing that he's caught up on, something that he recently spoke on in specific. And then now this happens. And so my thing is we've got to be very careful. I'm not one. One of the things is, whether no matter where I've spoken in the past, when I was in, uh, in ahead in the church, uh, before we had our issues, those of you don't know, um, had a major breakup with the church some years ago. It's been a while. But even then, the one thing that I've always said when I approach the mic is that I don't speak from the platform of perfection. I'm, I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm healing. There are still things I struggle with and I try to be as honest as I can. I don't owe anyone the details of my life or my relationships or anything like that, but there are things I definitely need to work on and I'm careful about how I handle people. The thing is, the more I evaluate who I am, the less judgmental I become. It, it's what makes me good at what I do. A person could come to me for help and I don't care where they're at and what they've done. They're not going to get judged because I understand how life deals and I understand how difficult life can be. And I understand that at any given moment, you can make a decision that you will later regret. And so what does that mean? It means that you have to be understanding about other people when they make major decisions again. And so this goes back to me with Derek. I've had some issues with the brother, uh, but I've you know pretty much stayed out of it. Uh, I weighed in before because I felt like he wasn't really truly um, addressing women the way they needed to be. I said what I had to say about it, and I was done with it. Haven't said anything since. Now that this come out, I've said what I had to say, and I wish him the best. I hope he pulls out of it. Uh, I hope that it wakes him up. You know, I'm not going to make any assessment of whether I think it will or whether I think it won't. Um, I think that it has made us more aware. I think he has made my job more difficult. Um, there's just more people out there now who won't trust me. Um, and it, it it's a part of what it is. You know, being a black man doing things that white people predominantly do and are known for isn't an easy thing. Being one of the best at it is, is it makes it even that much work because people become threatened. And you you, you have to learn how to move and negotiate and navigate around things. Uh, so it's going to be, you know, something, I mean, uh, but what I think is that's still, that's still an audience for him. Uh, he's charismatic. He's well-spoken, uh, an attractive young man. Um, uh, that, that's going to be an audience for him. It's how well he handles it, uh, how honest and forthcoming he is about it, how well he works on himself after it to really deal with the issues that led to this because there are issues and, you know, he could come out of this and, you know, I wish him the best. Uh, I'm not one of the ones running around, say, I, you know, laughing and, you know, talking about it. And, you know, my wife and I had a serious conversation about it. Uh, we discussed it and kind of thought about it. Um, she's very familiar with him. Um, you know, we discuss some of the stuff he says on a regular basis. Um, 
And so my thing is, again, uh, this is an ill will. This is a call out, man. We got to man up. We got to make sure our I's are dotted and our T's are crossed because there's so many looking for us to fail, looking for us to do something stupid so they can take us down. And, you know, he's been accused by, uh, what, what's her name again, Tasha K, uh, and a few others of being a narcissist. I'm not going to make that diagnosis while I'm probably more qualified than any of the ones accused him of that. I'm not going to make that diagnosis on what I've seen so far. Um, I think he's definitely highly confident. Uh, being overconfident is one of the characteristics of a narcissist. But it doesn't make you a narcissist. I would, uh, I think confidence is a necessity to be successful in life, especially in a consistent way. Um, I prefer men who are confident. I prefer men who are well-spoken. I don't like yes men around me, people who just say what I want them to say. I mean, I want somebody that can be confident enough to tell me when they think I'm doing something stupid. You are really no use to me if when I go to crash, you're going to crash with me. You know, so... I'm real big on male confidence. I think that it's been uh, marginalized. It's been attacked, you know, with, with terms like toxic masculinity. Masculinity is masculinity. When you start talking about stuff that you call toxic masculinity, that's not masculinity. That's erroneous behavior being disguised as masculinity. And we need to know the difference and we need to be careful about how we uh, make those assessments. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I just wanted to get this out of the way before I really got to going in my day. And um, so that's that. Look, have an awesome day. Like I said, I plan to get back to you a little later. Got about four or five clients this morning. Uh, Monday's a busy uh, morning. And then, you know, I'm going to hit the gym and do a couple of other things, but I'll be back with a live stream. We're going to talk about uh, the importance of marriage. I want you guys to hang around for that. Keep a lookout for the, um, the notice that I'm going, excuse me, that I'm going live and we're going to make something happen. Again, um, I wish Derek Jackson the best. Uh, I'm not a fan, uh, but I respect um, the fact that he's trying to do something and that's me giving the benefit of the doubt that's me saying I hope you're doing it for the right reason even though you're doing it the wrong way and you're in over your head um, because and, and the reason I say he's in over his head is there are some things that got him to where he's at right now in the situation and predicament he's in and he should have dealt with that first before taking that position because now you got books out talking about something that you're struggling in and you know but and so you know i've just never been a fan of his because to me it was very anecdotal it was something that was easy to say and i think that it kind of catered towards some of the real true yearnings of our women but not really truly addressing it but it sounds good uh i think that he can be very powerful if he educates himself at a greater level uh, if he really and truly works on himself so that he can be a representation of what it should like. I mean, he gave a good Im image impression, uh, you know, but like I said, my my thing is, first thing I said to my wife is when all this stuff hit was, he's married? You know, from what I understand, for the first time ever, he posted his wife's picture uh, last August or something like that. Um and so, you know, I don't keep up with him like that to be seeing what he posts all the time. Uh, but I didn't know he was married. So that kind of blew me away. And that's the whole thing. You know, the one thing a person is going to know about me is I'm married. Uh, I think, man, if I have a video over three minutes, I'm going to mention my wife. Because she's that much of an integral part of who I am. Um, and she means that much to me. Uh, I've actually reduced how much I share about my wife and how much I love her because she asked because she felt like she was getting a lot of negative energy after those posts. And we were really truly trying to manage our energy. And she felt like I was inviting some people who really didn't like her or like me or wish the best for us. And, and so 
I've kind of reeled it back in. We both still do it, but just, you know, not as much. Um, but that's my take on it. Um, you know, um, some people are going to wish I would have went harder on him. My whole thing is he's got enough people to tear him down. That's not why I'm here. I want to use it as a teaching moment for every other man that's out there on how things should be done and what we need to do. Um, trust me, Derek's got his hand full. Um, whether he comes back from it or not, we'll see. Um, I don't wish hardship on anyone. I, you know, but what I can tell you is what you put out, the law of universal law of reciprocity, uh, karma, sowing and reaping, whatever you want to call it, you put that stuff out, it comes back. You got to be prepared to deal with it. You got to overcome it. You got to recalibrate and you got to learn from it. And hopefully he does that. If not, we'll be having a conversation where I'll totally write him off next time. You know, uh, we'll give everybody else a chance except our own, a second chance except our own. So I won't be guilty of that. But, you know, if it happens again, then we have to say, okay, this is your character. And that's my take on it. Uh, like I said, some are going to say I should have went harder on him. Uh, I don't got that kind of energy right now. Um, I think, you know, he's got enough, like I said, aimed at him. But anyway, uh, that'll be something that says I should have left him alone. You know, I'm not here to please people. I'm here to share from my heart and to give you what I have in the way of knowledge and experience um, and hopefully in, 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 in inspire you and empower you. Uh, that's my goal on everything I do on any platform in any of my companies is to empower people. Uh, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Uh, people talk Real about talk, it, the the shots. Shots. all of the elements.